Direct from the Broski Nation headquarters in Los Angeles, California, this is the Broski Report with your host, Brittany Broski. Hey guys, <laughs> welcome back to another episode of the Broski Report starring me, your host, Brittany Broski, on the Broski Report. I am not going to bullshit. I am tweaking. <laughs> I had three cups of Cafe Boost Low this morning. No, I'm not sponsored by them. It's just fucking jet fuel. It makes me feel crazy. I'm like, I, I could, you know, when you get so excited, it's like, I have something to say, but it's nothing of substance. That's the whole fucking point of this podcast. So I'm feeling real, real hyper. I'm feeling real, real silly. And I think we're in for a silly goose time. Okay. I'll be real honest. Now, the end of the last episode, as I was wrapping up, I was like, fuck me, dude. I forgot to tell the people my three favorite songs of the week. So I'm going to do that now because I forgot it last time. So I'm an idiot, idiot, idiot. Okay. My three favorite songs of this week are number one, La Bebe, La Remix, La Remix by Peso Pluma. And who the fuck else sings it? Young Lucas. That song? And I know, like, girl, yeah, we get it. It's the number one trending song in Mexico or whatever. Or maybe that's Ella, Ella Baila Sola. La Bebe, the best song I've ever heard. It might be. It might be. Desafánate, lo que luego empapate. Are you kidding? Like, are you... The way he sings it, oh my God. Okay, anyway. I feel like I need to fucking scream. Okay. Next. Sweet Nothing by Calvin Harris and Florence Welch. <laughs> this is an oldie but a goodie, okay? Y'all forgot about this song. Y'all giving me such sweet nothing. You're gonna die. Such a good song, dude. I recently like, <clears throat> was electroshocked back to my Calvin Harris era. There are so many bops. Me and Taylor were singing in the car to it. Chills up and down our arms, down our legs. It was crazy. Another one. Okay. This is not on the record. This is not official Broski Nation propaganda. This is not anywhere. There is not a letterhead that you will find that has Broski Nation royal signature on it that will endorse this message by any means. But I'm going to say it, okay? But it's totally off the record. The third song is going to be Last Night by Morgan Wallen. Now, does that deeply, deeply trouble me? Yes, it does, Okay. But I love that song. I love it. Last night we let the liquor talk. That's a, we said we thought it was a and we got it all. No way it was a last night. That song is so, it's got crack in it, bitch. It's got crack in it. Those are going to be my three songs of the week. We've got a good mix of, um, Basil Pluma. Calvin Harris and redacted. Okay. Redacted. We were not going to say his name moving right along. Okay. So what are the updates from the last time that we spoke? I am feeling like TikTok is pissing me off lately. Okay. I need to get that off my chest. TikTok there are certain practices and cultural habits on TikTok that piss me off. Okay. I'm just going to, I have compiled a short little list here of about six things. And I would like to talk about them with y'all because I know that you can relate. It is just like, I'm finally waking up. I'm waking up from ash and dust. Bring back Imagine Dragons. Why is the lead singer of Imagine Dragons sexy, dude? Pull them up. Imagine Dragons. Lead. Lead singer shirtless. Yup. 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 Uh, yup. And yup. Yup. <laughs> I know that's right. Ooh. 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 Okay. Ooh. 
<laughs> oh, I'm tearing up. Okay. Ooh, my face just got hot. Okay. God damn. This is Imagine Dragons. And it's more than one guy, I think. This is um Dan Reynolds. Okay? Dan Reynolds, you are welcome on this channel anytime. Dan Reynolds, how are you? Hey, Dan Reynolds. What's, what's going on? You want to come over? We could play the Wii. I bought a Wii off eBay for 60 bucks. Okay? Solely to play Beatles Rock Band because I'm a fucking American. Anyway, why was I talking about Imagine Dragons? I'm waking up. I'm waking up out of this stupor that TikTok has put me in where I'm just like this passive fucking robot zombie wall-y like glued to my chair and iPhone just like blob of flesh. I'm waking up and I'm sentient. I am Wally and I'm searching for my Eva. Okay. And Disney, you can put that on a shirt and you can give me $50 million in royalties. Okay. Walt, it's me. Wait, what's up? They hit the Pentagon again. Sorry. Or did that bit. <laughs> the Pentagon bit's funny every time. Okay. In that right, Mickey. Okay. Imagine dragons. What were we talking about? TikTok. I am no longer a passive absorber, consumer, if you will, of capitalism. I'm fucking sick and tired of being sold to. And I refuse, I refuse to the best of my ability because these apps were created and built to keep our attention for the long run, to sell to us and bleed us dry of every piece of attention, money, self-confidence, and sanity that we have, which is not much. Hey, it's not much. So I am waking up and I encourage you, children of the Lord, to follow me, okay? Now, when I scroll on TikTok, and I see the top four beauty products, unit scroll. Also, scroll back. Not interested. I'm not interested. Okay, dude? Like, I'm sick of it. Okay, tell me why everyone needs this. What? Holy grail. Not interested. Stop buying fast fashion and invest in these brands. Scroll. Scroll. I'm going to start wearing a fucking potato sack. I'm going to start wearing pillowcases when I leave the house because you can't buy fast fashion. You can't buy thrifted clothes because they're so expensive. And also you're stealing from people that might need them. Hey, I need them. Not me, but you know what I mean? And you can't buy department store clothes because they don't carry your size. And then also this whole trend of like, really thin people buying oversized items. Hey, that's my real size. I wear a 2X for real, okay? Sorry, you need a sleep shirt, babe. I'm a 2X, I'm a big mama. There's so many like nuances and layers to that conversation of just like buying clothes and reselling clothes online. Girl, don't fucking get me started on Depop. It's just like, that is the culture online where you cannot do anything right. And I think that there is a line to a certain extent of people have to buy clothes. We are in one of the worst economic recessions right now. It's not feasible for everyone to buy secondhand clothing. And also on top of that, when you go to thrift stores, all the good stuff is taken by the trendy girls so they can do hauls on TikTok. You know, like there are actually, I remember I, when I was in college and when I worked my job where I made 39,000 a year, I shopped at thrift stores because that's all I could afford. You know, it's like, I understand all sides of the conversation, but let people do what they're going to do, right? Like there is no point in shaming people for buying Shein if that's all they can afford. Because guess what? Shein and Cider are some of the only body inclusive websites that sell cute clothes that aren't the fucking maternity cut for plus size. I just like, I feel so passionately about this issue because what's the fucking alternative girl? Torrid, Lane Bryant, 
dress barn, shoot me in the head. Take me at, take me behind the shed and shoot me with a rifle, old yeller style. Dude, before I shop at dress barn, are you kidding? It's not flattering. It's not young. It doesn't make you feel beautiful. You know, it's like those are for, those stores are not where I want to shop. And I'm tired of having to like dance around the issue. Okay. It's one thing to shop from there as just like a normal person where it's like, I can't fucking afford anything else. And it's another thing to promote those brands, right? When you see people taking money and doing brand deals for Shein, Fashion Nova, things like that, that's a different beast entirely as you are now endorsing and promoting that. It's such a multi-layered issue. And I think that people take statements out of context a lot as fucking always on the internet. Nothing is spoken about with nuance. It's just so, and it's also like, they tend to leave out this part of, I am living in a plus size body. Not every store, it's 2023, and you would be shocked at how little percentage still of stores carry above a fucking XL. An XL is like, what, a size 10? Girl. Anyway, that was that on that. That's one aspect of TikTok culture that pisses me off is the shaming, the shaming. Because TikTok fashion is such a big thing. I mean, since the pandemic of like how to style this and TikTok fashion is its own thing. And, and, and we see trends come from TikTok and resurgences and the whole Y2K thing happened during the whatever. It's just like, let people enjoy things. Anyway, this episode is sponsored by PDS Debt. It feels like every time I talk to my friends from college, one of the first things we always talk about is how much debt we have from college. Isn't that fun? I love catching up with friends. How many of you wish there was a better solution to paying off that debt that just hangs over our heads? PDS Debt has customized 0% interest options for anyone struggling with credit cards, personal loans, collections, or medical bills. With rising interest rates and the cost of living at a literal all-time high, now is the time to finally take initiative with your debt. Stop waiting and start saving with your own custom debt savings options from PDS Debt. PDS Debt is giving our qualified listeners a free debt savings analysis just for completing the 30-second online debt assessment at pdsdebt.com report. You'll receive a full breakdown on how to save on interest each month and the quickest way to take care of your debt. Look, if you're making payments every month on your debt and your balances are not going down, this program is for you. PDS Debt rolls all of your payments into one low 0% interest monthly payment. Everyone with over 10K or more in debt qualifies and there's no minimum credit score required bad and fair credit accepted. Save thousands in interest and fees and pay off your debt in a fraction of the time. PDS Debt is offering free debt analysis to my listeners just for completing the quick and easy debt assessment at www.pdsdebt.com report. That's pdsdebt.com slash report. Thanks. Story times on TikTok. If you can't fit it, in a three minute video, I don't want to hear it. Okay. Unless it is the craziest story of my life that I've ever heard. I don't want to hear it. Okay. It's that simple. It's that simple guys. Don't do a part two. Part twos are so annoying. Like and share for part two. Hey, I won't be doing that. Also, I just reported your account. <laughs> like and follow for part two. Hey, I have your address. And I'm going to tweet it. <laughs> like and share for part two. Also, guys, follow me on Instagram before. Is your daughter's name Brittany? Is your daughter's name Haley? I know where they go to school. Sorry, that was dark. <laughs> Holy shit. Hey, sorry. <laughs> what? Okay. People who beg for a follow at the beginning of a part two, or what's even worse, I didn't know this was gonna go, wow, didn't expect that to blow up. If you're new here, follow my, immediately I'm checked out. I'm checked out of whatever you were about to say. No, I don't care. No longer interested, moving on. Blocked and reported. 
Number two is, like I said, being sold to constantly. Being sold to constantly. I'm finally like aware of it. And when I get a video that's like, these are my three holy grail, da, 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 I'm not interested. And also I'll do the thing where it's like, how do you feel about this video? I like it. I, neither. I don't like it. I'll say, I don't like it. Don't. Your algorithm is completely in your hands. What you're liking, how long you're watching the videos, if you're interested, not interested. Like you communicate that to the algorithm. Yeah. Your destiny is in your hands. And don't act like it's not. Because it is. That's just so annoying. Like I'm so cognizant of when I'm being pushed a brand or a product or a service. Girl, leave it at the door. I'm trying to watch edits of Peso Pluma. Old people on TikTok. There was a time where old people on TikTok used to be charming. Charming and funny and, oh my God, look, he doesn't know how to use the app. Grandpa, you're our grandpa now. If I see another old geezer, old, old, <laughs> another old hag on my for you page, I am blocking and reporting that account. No questions asked. If you are over the age of 60 and you don't get it by now, you're gone, grandma. I don't want to see you. You can be a liker and a commenter. I love when I get a video on my For You page of like the Beach Boys. It'll be like Beach Boys, 1971, Mike Love, whatever. And someone will comment. It'll be a grandma. It'll be like, it'll be like Susan Connolly, 1991. And it'll be like, the comment says, I was at this concert. He waved to me. It was the happiest day of my life. I'm 72. See, I like that. You can be a commenter. I want to hear that. Like, that's cool, right? Like, you were at this concert? That's sick. If you're making videos with the dumbass filters, or it's like, sometimes it'll be a stitch of a funny video, or like, tell me about the time that you, and then it'll be a stitch of some old guy being like, Frito Pa! Oh, I hate old people. <laughs> oh. oh, that's about to piss me off. Because it's not funny anymore. And the people that enable that and encourage it, you're not funny. You are painfully unfunny. Moving on. People who just point to text over their head. One of these. Die. 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 You should consider getting in a car and driving far, far away from civilization, from anyone and do some introspection. Find something interesting about yourself, about your hobbies, who you are as a person. And when you're ready, come back to civilization and share it with us. Because pointing to text over a fucking TikTok is not content and it's not a personality. Moving on. Oh my God, I still get tagged in these. It's about to piss me off. <laughs> I, TikTok culture is so strange. Strange. I still to this day get tagged by like 13 year olds on TikTok. Your second at has to take you to Italy. Who, who you got? And people will tag me and then react to it. Hey, go finish your algebra homework. Hey, you have a test on Friday. Fucking tag me on TikTok. I don't even tag my friend. That's what the DM feature's for. Don't tag people on a TikTok. Send it to them. Oh my God. I just think that's so annoying. Your second at. Okay, your third at has to respond in 30 seconds or they owe you $10. Girl. This last one is about to piss me off even more than I'm pissed off right now. It is the phenomenon that needs to be studied by sociologists and philanthropists everywhere, I think. People who try to have a viral sound. 
Okay? People who try their hardest to make like a funny, widely applicable, but also incredibly specific viral sound that no one uses because that's the point of a viral sound is it goes viral for one reason and then someone finds a use for it some other way and that's how it becomes funny, right? That clip of Tom from Succession talking about the heinous Burberry bag that was specific to that episode and people take that sound and apply it to other things. Like when you travel in Europe with a big suitcase and it's like, look at that heinous, da da da. That's funny, okay? Because it's applicable in both situations. It has context and also no context. This shit pisses me off. Let's watch it. So the caption, I'll describe it for the audio listeners, is creating potentially viral sounds part one. And of course, this is a deleted video. And it is a young woman, seemingly around the age of 15 to 17. And this is the audio. What the fuck would you do that? Go built like a butt cheek. <laughs> I just like... I could take, like, you know when you go to a diner and those booths are made of that really sticky leather, like, vinyl? I could take a bite out of that and just... <laughs> I am filled with so much rage. I'm filled with so much testosterone. I could outrun a greyhound. I am so angered by whatever the fuck that was. And we're gonna watch it again, of course. What the fuck would you do that? No, built like a butt cheek. You know she fit, wait, you know she finished filming that and was like, I ate that up. <laughs> she finished filming that and was like, this one's gonna bang. This is a good one. No hate to this girl, obviously. Because I know it, it truly, genuinely should be studied. Like what, whatever the driving force behind this is, right? Of like, why do you want to go viral so bad? And I was talking about this with Stanley the other day. I feel like everyone in the year of our Lord, 2023, everyone either has or has known somebody in their personal life that has had a viral TikTok. The true meaning of viral is gone. I, th I think when viral used to mean everyone saw it, it was when the internet was a smaller place back when YouTube was a very small platform. When a video went viral, that meant everyone on the platform had seen it. There are so few videos like that to this day where it's like, everyone remembers that because the world was such a small place when that happened, when TikTok was a very small platform. Um, the Avani clown video, you know, where she, a fucking piece of uh -huh, If you were on TikTok 2019, you saw that video because everyone saw that video. Charlie doing the renegade. Everyone saw that. This shit is like forcing virality in an age where it is just, it has gotten too big. This platform, what has 1 billion active users or something stupid like that? You are not going to have a viral video in that sense. You know, you may get, 100,000, 300,000 likes, which is huge, don't get me wrong, but that is a drop in the bucket in the grand scheme of things. And I think that these kids in high school don't understand that, you know, where it's like, and also this video got what, 69,000 likes or something like that. And then she deleted it because they bullied the fuck out of her. So is it worth it? Like, is it worth it? I just, I have this whole weird thing about, you know, like it's easy for me to sit here and talk about, mm, of course you'd want to go viral, but like, do we, I don't, I see it from all different angles of the, the crazy fast paced nature of being the subject of a viral video. Obviously I understand that, but also like I miss the anonymity of being able to just scroll and comment and like things without people going through your likes or seeing your comments on shit and being, Ariana, what are you doing here? Girl, 
I miss the anonymity to a certain extent, but I'm also incredibly grateful, obviously, for everything that's come from having a viral video. I don't think that now, at this point in time, the kombucha video could be recreated, at least not on TikTok, you know, where it reaches everyone. I am so excited for a new app where new creators can come and, and we'll see them sprout from there. And it's so weird to think that because I'm sure like Cody Ko and people who really had their initial success on Vine probably felt that way too about TikTok of like, who's going to come up out of this app? You know, and it's obviously going to be a younger generation, but how the senses of humor change and all that. Like I just, this sort of content is just going to piss me off because it's like, you don't know what you're asking for. I think, I think that's it. You don't know what you're inviting. It's like playing with a Ouija board, girl. You don't know what you are asking into your home because if you don't close that portal, hey, they're staying with you. And now she will forever be known not forever, but for a little bit, she'll be known as, didn't you make that cringy? Could you imagine? Hey, you made that cringy TikTok. Oh. I just like, all because you want that moment. Who doesn't? That moment, that 15 minutes of fame. You want to have a viral video. You want to go to school the next day and be like, yeah, I'm TikTok famous. I get it. Trust and believe I get it. But I think that there's more to life than having that moment. There is more to life than online attention. Moving on. Thank you, the sponsor of today's episode, SeatGeek. You guys know that I am, to my absolute atomic cellular core of a being, a concert junkie. I live for live music. I live to see my favorite artist perform and that I think is my sole purpose on this earth. Later this year, I am seeing the Arctic Monkeys dude and Beyonce and Hosier. What are you talking about? And I got my tickets thanks to SeatGeek. With over 28 million downloads, SeatGeek is the number one rated ticketing app. There are more than 70,000 events every single day on SeatGeek, including concerts, sports, festivals, and more. I recently saw the 1975 when they were in LA. Hey, peed on myself. Peed down my leg. Artists like Taylor Swift, Luke Combs, Ed Sheeran, Drake, they're all on tour, so you're not going to want to miss out. Also, sports. Where are my sports people at? The NBA and NHL playoffs are right around the corner, and baseball is back, baby. SeatGeek puts all the tickets across the web in one place to make sure you're getting a good deal. Each ticket is rated on a scale of one to 10. So look for the green dots. Green means good, red means bad, right? Figure it out, guys. Every ticket is backed by their buyer guarantee and SeatGeek is the only site that lets you return your tickets ahead of the event with swaps. And you know I came through for you guys, so use my code BROSKI for $20 off tickets at SeatGeek. That is $20 off your first purchase with promo code BROSKI. Make sure you click the link in the description to download the app. And again, my code is BROSKI. I would like to talk about how I sleep. Because maybe I'm realizing that I sleep really weird. <laughs> and I would like to be validated and maybe, maybe reassured that the way I sleep isn't weird. Let me describe it. So to begin, I can't wear underwear. <laughs> Half of the beauty of wearing a muumuu is you can free ball. You can free ball your downstairs, your undercarriage to the wind. There is nothing, <laughs> there is nothing more American I can think of. More eagle call. <laughs> Wasn't an eagle call. I don't know what that was. Eagle call. <laughs> Not an eagle call either. What the fuck? There is nothing, I think, in my opinion, more American. Right? There's nothing more American nah. than laying in a Tempur-Pedic mattress bed in a muumuu. Having one of those old, yellow, dusty fans at the foot of the bed, just right, right mattress level. And it's blowing 
up the moo moo. <laughs> Spit. Into your undercarriage. Drying it off. Right? I can't think of anything more freeing. More, th- that is what, that is what George Washington fought and died for. Is for me to lay in my bed with a yellowed fan from the 1990s blowing on my undercarriage. That is a beautiful thing. And if you've never tried it, I encourage you. I encourage you. Go home and try it. Put on, buy a muumuu. First of all, step, step one, go to Walmart. Buy a muumuu. Okay, seven bucks. Do it. It's worth it. If you're a man, do it. If you're non-binary, even better. Do it. Go to Walmart, get a muumuu, lay in bed. Turn that fan on. And you put on your favorite TV show and you say that, and you lay there and you do. Like a dad watching golf. That is literally me in my bed watching Duck Dynasty. <laughs> in my muumuu with my undercarriage. Okay. First of all, that's how, that's step one of how I have to sleep. Is on the drying rack, so to speak. I have to lay there like that. I have to have one of those soft, blankets. I don't know how to describe it, but other than Target always sells them. It's those soft blankets that's like I don't know how to it's just it's fur it's fuzzy, but it's not furry and it's not woven, it's not scratchy, it's just like super soft. You got to put one of those on you and then the comforter. But then you got to rip the comforter off and you got to stick one leg out. Okay? So you got one leg out touching the fan and then you got one leg under the covers. I have to have two pillows under me, under my neck to prop me up so I can watch TikTok as my TV's playing. <laughs> then I have a little squishy strawberry pillow. I put that under my neck so I can see good. <laughs> so I can see real good. Then I have to have my, this thing, I gotta have my Whataburger Yeti, okay? <clears throat> Full of ice water. And one of my great aunts is from New Jersey and she says, water, water. Full of ice water. And you gotta have that by the bedside always. Cause sometimes, hey, sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night and I have cotton mouth for no reason and I can't fucking breathe because my tonsils are touching and my tongue completely dried out. Okay? Why? What's up? What's up, guys? You're, you're weird. You're weird. I didn't come on here to feel judged. I came on here to feel peace. To, ha- to feel peace and understanding and I'm not getting it. Sometimes I feel like HRH collection. <laughs> I'll be really, really honest. I feel like HRH collection. I'm yelling at an invisible audience that I know is going to be in the comments. I know some of you bitches are going to be like, you have cotton mouth. You should see a doctor. You're dehydrated. How could I be dehydrated when I have my Whataburger Yeti full of ice water, you bitch? Anyway. <laughs> Eagle sound effect pulled up on my... <laughs> Okay. Okay, so we got the undercarriage, we have the blanket, we have the pillows, we have my uh Whataburger ice water. Next, I keep a family size carton of plain goldfish next to my bedside. Plain. I don't want them too messy with the fucking flavor blasted, finger blasted, cheddar blasted, pizza flavored, sour cream and puss flavored Pringle goldfish. I don't need it. I need the salty goodness of a baked cheese snack cracker. Goldfish. Goldfish. The quicker picker upper. Goldfish. That's not it. (laughs) What are we talking about? Okay, I got my goldfish carton. And I mean family size. I mean like, if I brought it out here, it's about this tall and it's literally a carton. I keep that between my bed and my my nightstand. And if y'all call it a bedside table, you're weird. It's a nightstand, okay? So I pull that out 
and I, because I'm laying completely flat on my back with my neck propped at a 90 degree angle, I'll pour some of the goldfish on my, on my chest, on, on my chesticle. Because here is honestly a little serving plate. Okay? They call it your clavicle. I call it my serving plate. It's very flat right here. You can pour a few goldfish out and it's just like a, it's like sometimes when you fly first class on a plane and they bring around warm nuts in a little white bowl. It's like that, but it's goldfish on my boobs. Okay, so I have my goldfish, I have my water. Now, I open TikTok, okay? I open TikTok and it has to be loud, but not too loud because maybe I'm going deaf, okay? I really, really monitor the fuck out of my levels on my iPhone because I feel myself going deaf and that's a scary feeling. So I'll monitor that. And um, so it's gotta be loud, not too loud. Then on the TV, something has to be playing that I can pay attention to if I want to, but it, it's very low risk. What's the perfect solution? Duck Dynasty, okay? Because Duck Dynasty makes me miss my family because Duck Dynasty is exactly like my family and it's comfortable for me. And I've seen almost every episode, so I'll, I'll just put it up. It's on YouTube for free if you'd like to go watch Duck Dynasty. It's a good time. So I'll put that up on the TV, low volume. And then I'll, I'll watch TikToks, okay? For, yeah, you guessed it, two hours. And I have a time limit on my apps for an hour and a half. Blow through it every night. Might as well turn it off, okay? I'll be on TikTok for about two to three hours. And I'm... I'm, I'm uh, working on my collections. <laughs> I have a bunch of different, actually, what are my collections? One is recipes. Another is style inspiration. Another one is just really talented people I have called wow talent. Another one is makeup. Another one is ASMR. Another one's DIY. I have a whole one just for Maddie Healy for some reason. Uh, one called life tips. <laughs> and the first video is a girl talking about how she listens to medieval lo-fi beats fantasy lo-fi music when she's trying to clean the house because it makes her feel because it makes her feel like a medieval bar winch and I watched that video and I said I need to try that out I watched that video and said she's one of the forward thinking minds of our generation <laughs> fantasy lo-fi music all right next is design and then we've got perfume, tattoos, uh, and then one called Watch When Sad. And that's going to be funny videos, okay, that I'm probably going to do a reaction to on YouTube someday. Then the final one, and this is really what I've been curating for the past two weeks, is one called Hot Sexy. And that's just going to be a mix of Pedro Pascal and Pes uh, Peso Pluma. I need him biblically. I need him in a way that is concerning to feminism. Okay? And I'll say it because this is my newsroom. This is my newsroom. And if I say that I need peso pluma biblically and traditionally, then I mean it. Okay? Anyway. Okay, so that's what I'm watching on TikTok. I'm, I'm curating, right? And I'm swapping. I'm swapping between TikTok, Pinterest, Tumblr, Spotify. Sometimes I go listen to music on top of TikTok and my TV because I have to be stimulated. One thing about me, I'm going to be stimulated. Then when I've decided, all right, that's enough TikTok. That's enough art curation for the night. I place my phone down. I put it on the charger. I set my alarm for the next day whenever I need to get up. And then I'll go to my TV, I'll turn the volume down, and I'll either put it on celestial brown noise. They do a brown noise black screen video on YouTube that is so incredible for sleeping. It'll knock me on my ass. Or I'll put on one of those aesthetic like medieval castle with a crackling fire and it's raining and you're a princess and your prince is... Hey, I'm 26, by the way. I'll do that. I'll put that on. I'll be like, damn, I am in my fa I am in my mind palace. Really what I'm doing is building my mind palace. <laughs> my mind palace is my room with a fan on my undercarriage, Duck Dynasty on the TV, and a goldfish in my fucking lip. 
Okay. That's my mind palace. Oh my God. Oh my God. I literally can't think of anything more fun. I literally can't think of anything more fun. That is, I'm not joking, to a T, enrichment time in my enclosure. I am happy and safe, okay? I'm like a dog locked in a car. He's listening to his favorite music. The air is blowing. He has water. That's literally me in my room. Doug Dynasty, okay? Anyway. Oh my God, lately I've been into watching um, couples that go Disney bounding, which Disney bounding, if you didn't know is uh, you're not legally allowed to dress up like an actual Disney character when you go to Disney because people will think that you work for Disney and you're like one of the characters meet and greeting. And they're, that's just too fucking much. <laughs> they have a brand to, to keep up, okay? So you can Disney bound. You can dress inspired by a certain Disney character. And uh, I have found a couple on TikTok. I can't remember their names, but they do these crazy like, they act like they're video game characters. You know how they kind of like bounce and they do little like motions with their hands and then they, you know, whatever. And then it's always the hands on the hips for some reason. That's like the Disney adult fucking stance, fucking stature. And, uh, oh my God, they just nail it every time. And of course, of course, you have to finish it off with the Mickey ears. Always on theme. If they're dressing up as Beauty, Beauty and the Beast, hey, one of them, the, the woman, the wife, if you will, will have like a bell ears on and the husband will have uh, beast ears on. They are always on theme. Do you understand how rich Disney adults are? You have to be so rich to be able to buy all that shit, buy the ears, buy the food, buy the reusable cups, the reusable popcorn holders, the this, the that, the tumblers, the whatever. It's so much money, dude. Not to mention a day pass for Disneyland, park hopper pass to go to both Disneyland and California Adventure, because you have to, you can't just go to one. A Park Hopper Pass plus Genie Plus, which is the new Fast Pass, plus parking, plus shuttle, plus eating if you're gonna be there all day. It's like the, the Park Hopper ticket alone is usually about $300, 220 to like $300. And then everything else, I mean, you're easily spending 700 bucks maybe in a day. I mean, that is crazy. 700 for two people? Oh my God. And I'll do it. And you wouldn't? And you wouldn't? Oh, so you're lying. Oh, so you're a fucking liar. Oh, so you're allergic to joy, magic, and fun. Oh, so you're allergic to the wondrous joy of returning to a childlike state. Anyway, yeah, it is so expensive. I <laughs> I also follow these... uh this family that goes to Disney once a week, once a week. And it's like four of them. It's like, it's there. I think there's four people in the family. I think it's two kids and two parents. Oh my God. That's easily, that's a thousand bucks minimum a week. Oh, oh, that is crazy. I need to get on that grind. I need to just work at Disney. Maybe they'd give me a discount. I have a Mickey Mouse tattoo, dude. Do you think if I just flashed that, they'd be like, you're good. You're, hey, come on in, sister. And then everyone pats me on the back and then they invite me in and we all cheers. Oh, I love Disney. <laughs> I love Disney. Um, anyway, that's been my latest obsession. Anyway, uh, so that's, that's how I go to sleep is I have to put my brown noise on. I have to snuggle up in my, in my blanket and my moo moo and turn that, crank that fan up to seven, okay? Got my water, turn the lights out. I have one single salt lamp in my room that's turned down to the lowest setting. And that's the only light that I allow in my room because what if I have to get up to pee? I don't wanna hurt myself, I'll hurt myself. So keep that on, nothing else though. And I do have a toilet light. My mom got me a toilet light for Christmas. And I, listen, I cannot speak highly enough about it. Invest in a toilet light. It is so much fun. It will improve your quality of life by about 0.5%. I promise you that. And it alternates colors. So as I'm sitting there pissing, 
green, pissing yellow, pissing dark yellow and brown because I haven't had a sip of water that day because I've caught mouth because <laughs> I'm I am clinically dehydrated. <laughs> when I'm sitting there pissing brown into the toilet, that toilet light is working its magic. Red, green, blue, purple, whatever you want, it'll alternate. And then as soon as you leave the bathroom, turns off. Because guess what? It's motion activated. Rich. Rich. Hey, it's from Amazon. It was 15 bucks. Okay. Invest in a toilet light. I think that's just about all I have for you guys today on this episode of the Broski Report with me, Brittany Broski. I've been your host, Brittany Broski. And this has been the Broski Report. Please rate us five stars. Go ahead and listen on YouTube. Go and watch us on YouTube if you haven't. So you can see my beautiful set. You can see my beautiful Mickey Mouse clock. You can see my beautiful, um, the, um, my face. And all my laptop stickers. I got my laptop stickers. And my Elvis Presley mic. There's so much to see. Come join us over on YouTube, team. You can see my beautiful second angle. The second camera over here. And that'll do it for me this week. I'm loving you guys and missing you. And we'll catch you next week. Stay safe.